Today in algebra, we're going to be talking about, a, I think, a really easy skill that looks so almost impossible. It's just absolutely bizarre. And the more times I've tried to explain why factor by grouping works, the more times I've led people down, uh, led people down the wrong path. So let me just maybe look at this numerically because I think numerically it's not very confusing. So here we go. Let's just try this really quick. We have 15 plus 10 plus 6 plus 4 equals 35. Um, in a minute, somebody's going to be thinking, well, why would I do this any other way? Why, why wouldn't I just add them? And I just want to remind you before we get going that the reason that we're doing what we're doing is because what if this was x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared plus 4? Then all of a sudden, the adding of it is not so easy. So I'm trying to apply this numeric device to much more complicated uh, equations. So please stay with me on this, please. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to ask myself, is this tr still true? If I take 15, if I add it this way, if I added the 15 plus the 10 first, right, and then I added the 6 plus the 4 second, would that still equal 35? And I think it would because 15 plus 10 is 25. So it would be 25 here, and 6 plus 4 is 10, and 25 plus 10 is indeed 35. That would still work. Um, and then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start trying this kind of idea with this thing. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, just look at what's the greatest common factor of these two add-ins and what's the greatest common factor of these two add-ins and see if we can find something in common. So the greatest common factor of 15 and 10 is 5. Isn't that true? So here we're going to have 5. And I'm going to just color code this a little bit so we can maybe keep up with this. And it would be 5 plus 3 plus 2. Isn't that right? Okay. So right now, you're probably saying, why, why would he do this? I'm not getting this at all. But stay with me for just a second, if you don't mind. So we just, all we did here was that we took the greatest common factor and factored that out, okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to ask myself, what's the greatest common factor here? And the greatest common factor here seems to be 2. Well, again, maybe it's not obvious what's about to happen, but let's see what does happen. So I'm going to factor out. He said the greatest common factor here was Five, and the greatest factor here was 2. As a matter of fact, if you don't mind, the greatest factor here was 5. And the greatest factor here was 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2 from here. So I'm going to factor out positive 2. And then positive 2, remember, if we're going to factor something out, we have to make sure that we, if we put the pieces back together, that they make sense. So 2 times what is 6? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. And then I'll go here. 2 times what is 4 is 2. Right? If we try that, we'd have 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 times 5 is 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 5 is 10. 25 still works, doesn't it? So here's where I'm finally going with this idea that I want to tell you that you can break this whole thing out here and say, okay, take this 5 and this 2 and combine them. And then look, it's this, it's this times this and then this times this. So what if I just set it up as two binomials? and then foil them, isn't that exactly the way it would be anyway? Right? Here's our 5 times 3 plus 2, or here's our 5 times 3, 5 times 2 is this one. And we have, then we have our 2 times 3, then our 2 times 2. Here's 2 times 3 and our 2 times 2. So if we broke this out as foil, it would still work. And lo and behold, this would be 7 here, this would be 5 here, and it still equals 35, doesn't it? And we tested this, and this still equals 35. Um, just consider this idea for why we're going to do what we do in class today. And I'll post another video and we can look at that one. But let this be your frame of reference for why factor by grouping actually works, okay? Hang in there. I'm really proud of you guys.